Welcome to Common Sense, where we're taking you to Rockola Manufacturing today, one of the last jukebox makers left in the world, housed right here in Torrance. I'm Julie Chan, your host. Let's go inside and check it out. Rockola's inspiration began in 1914. The first product he saw that was coin operated was a gumball machine. Every time the coin would go in that slot, it was like music to his ears. Ken Urban, who started working for David C. Rockola in 1972 back in Chicago, reminisces on what inspired the man behind the business. He also got into other coin operated uh, products that other people manufactured and started putting them on the streets. Mm -hmm. So he was, a, he was actually an operator for a long time. Rockola went on to manufacture penny weight scales, pinball machines, gumball machines, and gambling devices, also known as trade stimulators, which gave you a gumball instead of money. In the 30s, they made uh, all mechanical pinball machines. Um, eventually, uh, after making so many different kind of uh, coin-operated products, uh, it led to jukeboxes. After 15 years in the coin-operated business, Rockola decided to enter the jukebox business, among a few other manufacturers. Rockola's first version was a 12-selection 78 RPM multi-selector. Well, there was um, three, three big ones in the United States. There was um, Seberg, which was in, also in Chicago, and there was Rowe AMI, which was out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and, and Rockola. Those were the three big companies. Besides that, the other company uh, was Wurlitzer in Germany. In 1936, Rockola opened a 600,000 square foot facility in Chicago. It was the largest factory in the world dedicated to making coin-operated machinery. There was 23 buildings that were interconnected. And, uh, Did you work there? I worked there, yeah. My Where did you work, yeah? This, this third floor was all engineering department. Uh -huh. My office actually was back in that little corner there. And where was David C.'s office? Uh, he was right about in the middle of all this here. <laughs> After the break, we'll take a look at jukeboxes over the years. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Historically speaking, at the heyday of jukeboxes, which was in the 30s, and then of course post-war, there literally was a jukebox in every restaurant and every bar and every bus station, every train station. They were just, it was the in thing to do. And they actually hurt some of the band business that was entertained in places like that. But I'm not talking about just bars and casual restaurants. They were in high-end restaurants. The very best places had the best sound, the best speakers, and they wanted something gorgeous. These were built to attract attention because in bars and restaurants, you want people from across the room, they want to, you want them to they see something, well, what's that? And every year they change, there's, there's different graphics that are put in and uh, uh, different design, cabinet designs, uh, again, to just draw attention to the product. And so back in the day, they used to be coin-operated, but now they're bill-operated. Well, it, it's both, yeah. I mean, back when I started, I mean, their songs were generally probably three, three for a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the 45 records went away and CDs came around, of course, a, a record was a dollar. A CD is like $10. So, of course, it, it cost the guy operating the machine a lot more money to put it on the street. So he's now going to be start charging a quarter or 50 cents for one song. I mean, it just happens. So, of course, if you're going to 
I'll play four songs, there's a dollar, you need a dollar bill accepted. With the advancement of technology and moving from records to CDs, there were also the inner workings of the jukebox. This gripping mechanism here was first used probably back in the 1940s or so. It's changed a little bit over the years, but the, the idea and how it works and how it turns, uh, that goes back to, again, the 1940s. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a design that uh, was patented in-house or something that he may have purchased from somebody, but uh, there's several things that are you know, patent ideas. This is one of the things that's patented uh, by Rockola. Today, Rockola Manufacturing is owned by Glenn Streeter and is known for making jukeboxes right here in Torrance. The company has over 150 dealers across the U.S. and about 35 distributors all over the world. A lot of handwork. This is what we call our, our basic black finish. This is extremely popular in Europe. More, uh, these finishes are more popular in Europe than they are in the United States. I, I don't know why. It seems like we're more traditional over here. That's the only thing I can figure. This is a little bit more of a modern kind of a, a look to it because they never made these in black, you know, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. And so are these more popular in America? Yeah, the regular finish is more popular in the United States. Glenn Streeter in California began antique apparatus in his garage in 1977 and moved his company to a larger building in Torrance in 1985. He restored and sold radios, phonographs, and jukeboxes, and then unexpectedly heard Rockola was for sale. I was at a show when I found out about it, and I literally went back to my hotel room and called the office here and dictated a letter to uh, Donald Rockola that I wanted to, I was interested. I think they both had that. Uh, a lot of passion for the product. I could see that with both guys, really, that's what kept Rockola going for so long was uh, David C. Rockola, not really their sons. I don't think they had the interest that uh, the old man did. And it was in 1992 that David C. Rockola's sons sold the company to Glenn Streeter. I'd restored a lot of old Rockola jukeboxes along with the other brands also. And uh, all, of them were, all of them were great. I mean, they're, it's American. To, that's the other thing, to the jukebox of an American invention. And um, all these companies were American uh, companies. Most of them were in Chicago at the time. Um, but to get the opportunity to take over the last one left, because the other two had already gone out of business, um, I just didn't want to see the last one go out of business, for one thing. So I, I feel fortunate that I've been able to keep it going and really enjoy it. Streeter also credits the continued success of Rockola to Ken Urban, who made the move from Chicago to Torrance. After going back and forth a couple times and being out here for almost two years, Glenn said, I want you to run the factory and, you know, take care of production. Stay with us. After the break, we'll hear more about Rockola. I started mentoring in my mentee, Dantre, four years ago. I always thought about doing it. It always seemed like a good idea. We were both nervous when we first met, but we kind of, everything kind of fell into place. Mentoring is important to anyone that's pretty fortunate in life to have a little bit of time to pass on that knowledge. Etienne's a very close friend. I look at him as a brother and a father figure. He taught me just focus on the big picture because I would like to give back just like Etienne gave back to me. Be someone who matters to someone who matters. It's been great to see all the different jukeboxes made over the years at Rockola. Now we're going to go down to the factory to check out how they're made from start to finish. Okay, let's go. Yeah, when Glenn started building these boxes, he actually, uh, from rebuilding uh, in, in the original boxes and restoring original boxes, mm -hmm. when he got the idea to start making a, uh, a reproduction, he actually had tools made off of original parts from old jukeboxes. So he recreated plastics, uh, castings, bubble tubes, and uh, the grill cloth, even, the diamond grill cloth. Right. And um, he, he wanted it to look authentic. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he, these, these parts here are so close to what the originals were, uh, there's people that are restoring original jukeboxes that will buy these pieces from us to put on original jukeboxes. Of course, if you know, originals break or something, 
you can't buy a replacement other than what we make. With about 10 people on the assembly line, from the CNC machine making the cuts in the wood to assembling cabinetry, sanding, painting, and final details, they make 25 or more jukeboxes in a day. We try to match up you know, the best we can and try to make it look uniform. But again, it's a piece of wood, so it's not perfect, but we do our best trying to make it look uniform from one side to the other. This is the sanding area here where they, uh, well, they'll put a little wood filler in certain areas, uh, of course, smooth everything out before it goes to the paint, paint area. How they make these sides actually is they layer up real thin pieces of wood and they'll stack them up and they have it, they have it, the pieces of wood go through a, uh, a roller machine with glue on it. And once they get to like about 11 layers, I believe it is, it goes into a press. And with heat and pressure, within a few minutes, it comes out with this curve. We get the sides in here, and what we'll do is we'll match them up, color and grain, to make both sides as close as possible to looking the same. And then we'll take the side, we'll, we'll cut, cut the sides square, cut the top and bottom, put our grooves in there, and get it ready to go in the press over there for a cabinet. He's going through some tests. He's putting some codes in there and stuff and, and checking the uh, mechanism that went, went through all its functions and uh, the computer went through its functions and everything passed properly. That's what he's looking for. And then what he'll do is he'll put, put a couple CDs in there and play some songs. He'll disconnect the speakers and then one by one plug them back in to make sure each speaker is working properly. With so many steps in the process, Ken Urban's 42 years of experience on the production line help keep the process organized. I did work in the engineering department for about 17 years. Uh, eventually led to uh, working in several areas of production. Uh, I built all the prototypes over those years, all the assembly line samples. But when you started in the engineering department, mm -hmm. what were you doing? Assembling jukeboxes. I would actually make the first jukebox. Torrance has proved to be a good location with many other manufacturers of goods. The city is business friendly and nearby to ports for shipping jukeboxes overseas. Rockola makes all the countertop wallets and larger jukeboxes for Johnny Rockets diners in America and throughout the world. That business has been steady ever since Johnny Rockets opened. They expanded right through the recession, obviously overseas. But we're shipping to Dubai, Russia, the Philippines, Malaysia, all over the place. Uh, I think the only place they're not in yet and they're working on is China. And how does it make you feel to see your jukeboxes in every Johnny Rockets in the universe? Well, it's, it's kind of neat. I kind of enjoy it, yeah. For other restaurants like Black Bear Diner, which is rapidly expanding on the West Coast and beyond, they choose to have the shell made by Rockola and then stream their own music in. But now the sound system in this is, uh, was 1,600 watts, now it's 2,000 watts and we use the PV uh, amplifiers for all of our jukeboxes. As a matter of fact, they're so pretty, I'd like to show you this. They're all lit up on the back. They're amazing. There's the, amp there's the PV 2000 watt amplifier right there with all the, that's too pretty to bury inside the cabinet. And besides, they ac easy access to the controls. And then you can hook it into your sound system at home and you can do anything. You can play this with your telephone, with your iPad, anything. It's amazing. And after the break, we'll hear more about Rockola. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things.
Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. There was a time when you could select three songs for a quarter. Nowadays, you can select songs by feeding the machine with your credit card. And now the box is digital. This will hold 14,000 albums, and you can go through here by either scrolling it through it one by one, or you can go by letter category. Or if you wanted to see all the albums you had in there, it shows you everything that's in there. In the and how way. do you put the albums in? You hook uh, it up to an iPod? No, you just it'll read a CD. Oh. It's got a DVD reader. And you uh, it'll just uh, record all that onto your hard drive. You plug into an internet line, and then it gives you the song, the uh, record jacket covers, and the song titles. And what you'll do, what you'll do to play songs, is you'll pick out a song on, a, on an album here, and you'll drag it across to the side here, and then your song will be here. And then, then what you'll do is once you create a playlist here, once you've dragged all these songs over, you can transfer this whole category up to these playlists like you see up here with the new technology with the touch screen and the uh, terabyte hard drive in there and it, you can play your iPod or your iPhone through the jukebox also. Um, hopefully that keeps them interested in, uh, in this style and, and is still be in demand, you know. We, we feel we're kind of uh, reaching out to the younger generation by having that technology. Not only does Rockola stay up with the times and changing ways of listening to music in their jukeboxes, but they also specialize today in making the bubbler style nostalgic jukebox, which retails for about $8,000. Tabletop jukeboxes retail for about $4,800. Do you have one of these at home? Yeah, I do. I have a countertop a digital one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see and I have a floor model. Actually, I have a 45 that I made back in the early 80s. One of the first series. Right. And then I've got uh, a countertop digital and a countertop CD jukebox. So I've got a 45, a CD, and a digital in my house. And I have a lot of... Do you have a, a stand-up, a big one like this? Uh, the 45 RPM is a full size like this. It's one of our more exotic ones, it's called a gazelle. And, uh, but I have a lot of serial number ones. I've kept serial number ones, they're all locked away. I have uh, in, the, in, in my singer vault. I have the Beatles Yellow Submarine. We only were allowed to make a hundred. Uh, my friend in England was allowed to make a hundred. I was allowed to make a hundred. I sold mine out instantaneously as soon as I announced them, and they never made more than ten over in England. I just, but that's the American market, you know, and the strength of the Beatles. Uh, but I got a lot of a lot of show number ones. And how many? songs do you have in your digital at home? I have no idea. <laughs> but I will that tell you, many? no, but this, we went to a terabyte hard drive and it now holds over 13,000 CDs, not songs. Now multiply that times songs. Exactly. That's 13,000 CDs times what, 15 or 20? Exactly. It's crazy numbers. He was phenomenal. And another fun thing has been to try to fill those shoes which is impossible. I think I have to pinch myself every once in a while because uh, of the way things have gone, but I don't know, the satisfaction of making something and creating something, and I have a very strong attitude about making the best product I can possibly make. So we've never had any competition on the quality and, and the uh, product that we put out. Uh, there, there's other people out there who make something cheaper, but. Uh, just the satisfaction of, of all the people out there enjoying music, having a great time and dancing or whatever to a jukebox, especially one of ours is great. Rockola is open to the public once a year during their annual car show, which takes place in August. Contact Ken Urban for more information at 310-261-4626. Truly been a pleasure and to see all of the details that go into making a jukebox makes me have a great appreciation for these pieces that are like furniture. Yeah. Really gorgeous, thank, thank you. you. Well, that's it for Common Sense today. We hope you'll join us next time for a rare opportunity to take a peek inside of companies.
If you know of another local business you'd like to see featured on our show, please send an email to commonsense at torrentca.gov.